From the birth of sim racing in 1985 to the early 2000s, there were two developers who dominated the genre. Jeff Grammond of Microprose and David Kammer of Papyrus. Today we'll rate all of their open wheel racing sims from worst to best. We all have our subjective favorites, but this is a totally scientific experiment. I've done countless of hours with all these games in the past five years, so I'm qualified. No opinions, just cold facts without any fan bias. In 1985, Jeff Grammond created the first ever racing sim, Revs, focusing on the British F3 series. Creating this game was only possible by taking a full advantage of the hardware back then and even top it by hiding code into the sky and doing a bunch of other magic tricks I won't get into here. In 1989, Papyrus released Indianapolis 500, the simulation, with its brilliant physics and brain-dead AI drivers. Three years later came Microprose Formula 1 Grand Prix, first sim including all the official F1 tracks with realistic 3D modeling and even wet weather. In 1993 out came Papyrus IndyCar Racing, the sequel IndyCar Racing 2 that even today, almost 30 years later, has an enthusiastic community around it, was released in 1995. Grammon's next classic Grand Prix 2 came out seriously delayed in 1996, but still gets lots of love and has an active community around it as well. In 1998, Papyrus released the legendary Grand Prix Legends with its legendary physics engine and legendary online multiplayer capabilities. Legendary. Grammon's Grand Prix 3 came in year 2000, once again a couple of years behind the schedule. This, however, was the first racing sim that included dynamic weather conditions, which was revolutionary at the time. Grammon's final masterpiece, Grand Prix 4, came out in 2002 and is still considered as one of the best F1 sims ever made. Papyrus, of course, also released a bunch of NASCAR sims and onwards from NASCAR Racing 4 became the dominant force in racing simulation finally transforming into iRacing we know today. We'll leave NASCAR out of this battle, because comparing it to open wheel racing feels to me like comparing European football to the American one. Sure, they breed from the same sport, but have evolved into a pretty much totally different animals. We will give the game's score from 0 to 20 in 5 different categories. Physics. Yeah, this is a pretty essential part of simulating a race car. Immersion. So does it feel you're in a real race or just playing a video game? For me this is the most important feature and I'd like to give it a higher weight, but because this is very scientific, I can't. Because for someone else physics might be more important. AI. Are the computer cars fun to race against? This is an important feature since in the earlier games online multiplayer was not a thing. Track modeling. How well do the tracks compare with the real ones? And finally, how the game has aged? Would you still want to play it in 2024 for sake of playing, not just because of a brief nostalgia trip into the past? Obviously it would be stupid to compare a sim from 1985 directly against a sim from 2002, so the points will be related to the time period the game was released, the best I can anyways. We'll go from the oldest to the newest, so we shall start with the grandpa. Revs from 1985. Getting into this game was one of the biggest surprises ever, since the game proved to be absolutely astounding. It's tough to compare it with anything similar on its time, because, well, there was nothing. But it's safe to say this surely was the best that was possible back then, given the hardware available. Sure, it's rudimentary, but still surprisingly detailed. You'll get your understeer and oversteer, you'll hop the curbs, you can even catch slides with countersteer, so it does everything it should and the car feels like a car should feel. Topping this with the day's hardware would have been nearly impossible. Of course you can say reaching the roof is easier if the roof is low, but 
I also have to give credit to the game for supporting fully analog controls, even though there is a slight input lag. When it comes to collision physics, well, you're either fine or dead. For physics, it gets 18 out of 20. Well, coming from the more modern sims, you have to kind of work to get into it. But once you do, you really get sucked into the race. It's very intense and exciting. Uh, would be nicer with real named drivers, but I did have some great battles against huge engine. For immersion, it gets 14 out of 20. So, it's a sim from 85 that aims for a realistic experience. My first thought was that the AI would 100% be unraceable. And first it seemed like that, I got murdered all the time. But after some more practice I realized it was actually my fault. I was just too slow in some corners. Basically I was a moving chicane inside a chicane, so no wonder I got rammed. Once I managed to build up more speed and actually be competitive, I stopped having issues with the AI and it proved to be a blast to race against. They give you the space in corners, they overtake mercilessly if you're slow, you can go wheel to wheel and have just epic battles. It's also dangerous enough to keep you on your toes. Who would have thought? For reference, I did 5 races in this channel, DNF'd in 2, both my own mistakes, no problems with the AI. Sure you crash with them sometimes, but it happens with a frequency where you don't get annoyed. I mean, that's racing. For AI, it gets 19 out of 20. I thought learning the tracks with these primitive graphics would be a pain. But no, the track modeling is spot on and I felt right at home because I knew the tracks from other sims. There's a great video by Race Sim Central on geometry accuracy in revs, link in the description, check it out. For tracks, it gets solid 20 out of 20. Would you play revs in 2024 for sake of having fun? Well, you really have to work in order to give it a chance. And after you say no, you'll have to give it another chance, and perhaps even a third one. But once you'll find your way in, it's some of the most fun and intense racing you'll find anywhere. Because it's Formula 3, the competition is tight, every lap is qualifying lap, and you'll break a sweat in the race. I personally would like to get back to revs, not just because of nostalgia, but having a good time. Because of rudimentary graphics and slight control lag, you have to kind of devote some time to calibrate your brain for it. For aging, it gets 15 out of 20. Total points for revs, 86 of 100. This game was an absolute masterpiece, given it was made in 1985. Next we move on to Papyrus Indianapolis 500. Revisiting this game with a modern racing wheel was an eye-opener of how realistic the physics were. Remember, it was 1989. Weight transfer, setting up the car, how the setups affect the car, tire pressures, temperatures, everything. I can't state how impressive this is for its time. And with a racing wheel it feels totally believable to drive, the, the feel is just brilliant. For me it's hard to grasp how a game that was created before racing wheels would get the feel just right with a racing wheel. On the negative side, it seems that the throttle and brake don't support analog controls, which is a shame. Also, there's a baked in dead zone in the steering that's hard to get rid of. Collision physics consists of blown tires or a blown engine if you crash too hard. Nonetheless, for physics it gets a solid 20 out of 20. Just can't ask for more. The race really feels like a real event. I, I really don't know how a game this old could do it any better. So I'll just say 20 out of 20. Okay, here's the problem. They are totally brain dead idiots. They just wreck you every chance they get, especially faster drivers behind you are super deadly. If you have to slow down to avoid someone in front of you, you'd better hope there's no one behind you because they just don't care. Completing a full distance race will require you to know the AI behavior inside out, but it's still not enough. You also need a bunch of luck to get to the finish. There are crashes that are downright unavoidable, which would be okay, but they just happen way too frequently. Also, it's just one track. I understand if making a good AI for 16 tracks is tricky, but for one, 
honestly, Revs did it way better. For AI, it gets 5 out of 20. Well, there's just indie, but it's done perfectly, so 20 out of 20, I guess. If you like shorter races and car damage off, then it's okay. However, I'm a freak and I like to go for full realism, and from this perspective it doesn't work, because racing against AI is quite frustrating. You'd probably just play this for a while for nostalgia and then leave it at that, so for aging it gets 12 out of 20. Total points for Indy 500, 77 out of 100. In 1991 we got Formula 1 Grand Prix by Jeff Grammont. I vividly remember watching an F1 race in the TV back then and I was like, holy smokes Batman, I know these corners from a video game. It feels this game was made specifically for a keyboard. And with a keyboard it feels great, but then the game is too easy, unless if you mod it. Also, I like to drive a car with a wheel. Also, remember that Indy 500 performed very well with a racing wheel. And in this one, with a racing wheel, you don't feel connected to the road. It's like driving a hovercraft. It's hard to find the limits when it comes to understeer, but then again, the car never spins on asphalt, unless if you set it up all weird. There is wheel spin, but it just slows you down, but it doesn't make the rear unstable. I'd even say that with the racing wheel revs felt more realistic. In wet, however, the game is amazing. You really struggle with the grip and have to really tippy-toe it around the track. Collision physics are quite forgiving, you break wings if you crash hard, and the engine dies if you crash really really hard. It's hard not to compare the depth of the physics engine with Indy 500, so for physics it gets 15 out of 20. This is where Jeff Grammont always shines. Going into the qualifying session, seeing AI cars leaving and returning into the pits, setting times that are real times they do around the track. In race you see broken cars pushed away from the track and cranes removing the carnage and damaged cars limping around the track trying to get into the pits. And if you retire you can sit back and just watch the rest of the race. It feels like an event where you're just a one participant. Solid 20 out of 20. AI is a bit slow and their strategies are usually bad. Their stints are too long and they lose a lot of time running on bad tires. There are just two or three tracks where the AI is competitive enough to make the race feel exciting. This can be fixed with some modding though. In wheel-to-wheel -wheel situations the AI is occasionally a bit ignorant, but they usually give you the space if you don't dive bomb too hard. Thing is, I feel the AI in revs was more fun to race against than in this one. In wet weather the AI is totally overpowered and almost impossible to race against. This is a big shame since otherwise racing in wet would be simply awesome. So for AI it gets 14 out of 20. Track modeling was amazing for its time. I mean, you can see some inaccuracies, but that's to be expected in a game this old. For tracks, it gets 17 out of 20. The game has aged pretty well, and what helps is that there's still a lot of mods available to improve the experience, and for example, car sets even for the latest F1 seasons. Check out the community and the mods, I'll put the link in the description. This game still has a lot of fun factor in it and I'd be happy to play this again. So for aging it gets 16 out of 20. Total points for Formula 1 Grand Prix, 82 out of 100. In 1993 IndyCar Racing by Papyrus was released. Back in the 90s this was my go-to IndyCar game and when IndyCar Racing 2 came out I kinda missed it completely for not having a good enough PC to run it properly. Guaranteed Papyrus quality. You have everything you had in Indy 500, but now on all kinds of tracks. I won't parrot the praise I just a couple of minutes ago did on Indianapolis 500, but I have to say, for a 800 horsepower turbocharged open wheeler, it feels quite easy and forgiving to drive, especially on street and road courses. Collision physics include blown tires, gone tires, and blown engines. The driving is very enjoyable, physics are comprehensive and it just feels right, so for physics it gets 19 out of 20. It's pretty good, but not quite on the Jeff Grammont level. Cars that retire just disappear, at least some qualifying laps by the AI are just simulated and so on. 
Also, you can't keep on watching the race after you retire, so it feels that the event is a bit of a fake and it's built around the player. For immersion, it gets 15 out of 20. A bunch of murderers. In some racing games, the AI is totally random, but you can predict what they do. In other racing games, the AI reacts to things, but you can learn that behavior as well. In IndyCar racing, they kind of hit the sweet spot in the middle, or, or should I say the sour spot. They are randomly reacting to things. Basically, you can spend hours and hours trying to figure out what they do in different situations and what you should do to avoid the carnage, but you'll never figure it out. The AI cars don't have to obey the laws of physics and they might slow down from 200 miles per hour into 5 miles an hour in a second or warp around a track. Good luck if you're behind them when they do that. It ends up being an endless stream of unavoidable accidents and I ended my season in IndyCar racing after a nervous breakdown. So for AI it gets 6 out of 20. There are some weird things, like Turn 1 in Portland for instance, but mostly it's very accurate for its age. For tracks it gets 18 out of 20. To be honest, this didn't age well. The AI is a mess to race against. The resolution and frame rate were poor, even for its time, and most of all I see no value ripping my hair off with this when we have IndyCar racing too. So for aging it gets 8 out of 20. Total points for IndyCar Racing, 66 out of 100. IndyCar Racing 2 came out just a couple of years after the first one, but it was a huge improvement. As I said, I missed it in the 90s, but playing it now has been a treat. I feel like a broken record, but papyrus quality. The physics engine is the same as in the earlier games, but obviously way more fine-tuned and detailed. The closest thing to compare this with is Grand Prix 2, which came out the next year. Grand Prix 2 loses on details on weight transfer, slip angle and tire modeling in form of pressure and temperature. Where IndyCar Racing 2 loses is that the cars don't rotate in three dimensions, so they don't hop over curbs or flip, the tires won't lock under heavy braking and you won't get proper wheel spin either. Thus, the car doesn't really feel like an independent object. Also, tire wear seems to have a little or no effect on performance. Collision physics in IndyCar Racing 2 are super realistic. So, doing it hardcore is hardcore. Break the suspension, and that's it. For physics, it gets 19 out of 20. Pretty much the same issues here that were in its predecessor. Again, good, but not quite Kramon level. For immersion, it gets 16 out of 20. Racing in hardcore is still more of a survival battle, but this time it's doable. I will again complain about the AI not having to deal with the same physics as the player, and it's a bit of an immersion breaker seeing them surviving impossible driving lines with impossible speed, hitting each other without any consequence, and even going through walls sometimes. You also really need to study the AI behavior in order to survive. For AI it gets 15 out of 20. The tracks are, again, very accurate, but I'd still recommend to download fan-made tracks if possible, since they are even better. For tracks it gets 19 out of 20. This game has aged very well, and not least because of the enthusiastic community around it. It has so much playing value even today, and if you want to do a full, realistic season of IndyCar, IndyCar Racing 2 is the way to go. For aging it gets 18 out of 20. IndyCar Racing 2 takes the lead with 87 points out of 100. For many people, Grand Prix 2 is THE Jeff Grammon game. It was released delayed in 1996 and had the license for the 1994 season, but it didn't take long till it had custom car sets for newer seasons. Even though this game shares the game engine with the F1 Grand Prix 5 years ago, it's a huge step forward. We already went through the comparison with IndyCar Racing 2, but for me Grand Prix 2 drives very well. The cars are incredibly grippy, but if you lose it, you lose it violently. Just as you'd expect from a twitchy and hard to drive cars in this era. To catch a slide you need the reflexes of, well, of a Formula 1 driver. With a bit of practice, it's pure joy to drive on the limit. Also very scary, as it should. 
Collision physics are quite inconsistent. You might get away with a hard hit, but on the other hand, just touching the grass might break your front wing. For physics, it gets 15 out of 20. All the things we had in Formula 1 Grand Prix, plus exploding engines, drivers with a puncture trying to limp into the pits, broken cars, abandoned track site, real looking race events, radio calls, or well, texts, telling about opponents pitting or retiring, it just doesn't get any better than this. For immersion, it gets 20 out of 20. Just incredibly raceable human-like AI. Lapped cars letting you go, brilliant, arrogant, overtaking maneuvers. I could go on and on and on. Also, the AI cars have individual strengths and weaknesses, and I've had so many battles where, for example, the opponent has less grip but more straight line speed, long fights where you pass in a slow section just to be passed back on a fast sector because the other guy has more power and then repeat that for multiple laps. For AI, it gets 19 out of 20. I think the track modeling could be more accurate. Monaco is way too wide and smooth and overtaking is easy. Aida is almost unrecognizable and Spa's Air Rouge is just wrong. It was already 1996, so I'm getting a little bit more critical about the tracks. Of course you can use fan-made tracks and they are brilliant. Thank you for all the modders out there. For tracks, it gets 14 out of 20. Grand Prix 2 has aged beautifully. It still looks great, it still feels great, and because of the random seed, all races are unpredictable and unique. You never get the feeling that, hey, I've done this before. For aging, it gets 20 out of 20. GP2 into the lead with one point. Overall, 88 points out of 100. In my books, 1998 was the year Papyrus really revolutionized everything. We got Grand Prix legends. With GPL, Papyrus introduced its brand new physics engine that was really on another level. Everything they did well earlier, like weight transfer and tire modeling, were still there, but now the cars also rotated in three dimensions, making them feel like real objects. Driving was incredibly challenging, but so much fun at the same time. Collision physics are sometimes a bit weird. Still, for physics, it gets a solid 20 out of 20. Immersion was also a step forward from the earlier Papyrus games. The game captures the atmosphere of the 60s Grand Prix racing brilliantly and you really get sucked into the race. For immersion, it gets 18 out of 20. AI is fun to race against. They feel more real than in the previous games, but still have their own physics. It's very weird seeing AI car turning left whilst their front wheels are pointing right. Also, you have to study their behavior since if you go side by side in the wrong place, they pretty much ignore you. Thankfully today there are custom AI files available, thanks to the community. For AI, it gets 15 out of 20. From what I can tell, the vanilla tracks are modeled very well. For more detail and accuracy, it's definitely recommendable to use mods and custom-made tracks. For tracks, it gets 18 out of 20. You can't ask for an old game to age any better than this. Because of the brilliant online multiplayer platform, there are still active leagues you can participate if you're done with the AI. With mods, you get more realistic physics and more eye candy. For aging, it gets 20 out of 20. Once again, a new leader with 91 points out of 100. Guess who's late again? It's Jeff. Once again, couple of years behind the schedule, Grand Prix 3 is released in year 2000 with the license of the 1998 season. Many people were expecting a similar leap in development we had between F1 Grand Prix and GP2 and were quite disappointed to the end result. However, Grammond was still a pioneer. Dynamic weather in Grand Prix 3 was the first of its kind and it took years and years and years for others to get anywhere close. GP3 was still using the same physics engine from 1991. Physics in Grand Prix 3 were an improvement from GP2, but started lagging behind Papyrus, who had been taking giant leaps with Grand Prix Legends. Tire modeling was a big step forward, since now the cars actually became more difficult to drive as the tires wore, as in Grand Prix 2 they just got slower. Tire temperatures were now a thing, but still modeled in a very simplified manner. Also, now we have finally got some slip angle. 
Driving in wet is a lot of fun, but on a drying track it's very hard since the tires don't carry any water. So on the dry line you have a perfect grip and in the wet you have none. Collision physics are pretty good, but sometimes, well, yeah. For physics it gets 14 out of 20. Immersion is again the strong point, for the same reasons we already went through in Grand Prix 2. In my opinion it wasn't really any better than in Grand Prix 2, but then again it's, it's hard to improve something that's already nearly perfect. For immersion it gets 19 out of 20. It's the good old brilliant Jeff Grammont AI, except that this time they also defend their position, sometimes quite aggressively. There's nothing like pushing qualifying laps in the race trying to fight a car with 100% similar pace. AI, it, it's just a pure joy to race against. For AI it gets 20 out of 20. GP3 track modeling is brilliant. There were some small inaccuracies that were fixed in Grand Prix 3 2000 edition, but all in all, perfect job for its time. For tracks it gets 18 out of 20. This is where Grand Prix 3 falls short. Everybody loved Grand Prix 2 more. EAS F1 series introduced a new physics engine that outperformed Grand Prix 3, and then Grand Prix 4 came out. So this game just fell into the middle and was soon almost forgotten. GP3 is still great to play and I enjoyed every minute, but I don't really know why you should choose it over Grand Prix 2 or Grand Prix 4. Also no online multiplayer because of the dated game engine. For aging it gets 8 out of 20. Total score 79 out of 100 for GP3. And finally Grand Prix 4 from 2002. For some people the Jeff Grammon sim is Grand Prix 2, and for some it's Grand Prix 4. It's guaranteed not to leave you cold. The contrast between crystal clear brilliant graphics, incredible racing experience, the huge amount of detail around the race events, with the horrible GUI, very temperamental and buggy behavior, and terribly outdated game engine. You will feel all the emotions with this one. As said, it's still the same game engine dating back from 1991 and it really shows in its many limitations. But with that in mind, in my opinion it drives very well. Even if the car feels quite planted to the road, it still feels more dynamic than Grand Prix 2 or Grand Prix 3. It's easier to catch slide, it's easier to accelerate out of corners with a little slide and turn the car with the throttle. I feel it's very believable thinking of how the cars of this era would behave. If you go over the limit it kills you very easily, so you kinda have to be ahead of the car instead of just reacting on what it does. For physics it gets 15 out of 20. They really went all the way with the details in a race event. It's hard to even comprehend the attention to detail. For instance, there are jumbo screens around the track. In modern games they even show commercials or an in-car view of the player's car, but in this one if you put your graphic settings to the max, those screens will actually show a directed live TV broadcast of the race you're participating in. So you might catch a glimpse of a broken car pushed away off the track from the screen and that event is actually happening somewhere on the track. And that's just one little example. It's just mental. Of course, immersion. 20 out of 20. To me, what's very telling about the AI is that whereas in other sims you have to study the AI behavior in order to avoid crashing, in GP4 you don't. You can just jump into a race stone cold and have great racing right out of bat. It makes practicing for races fun because instead of doing laps all by yourself trying to build your speed, here you can just jump into a race, have fun racing and building your speed at the same time. You can actually trust the AI and it feels you're racing against professional racing drivers. For AI it gets 20 out of 20. This was as good as it got in the early 2000s. Laser scanning was not a thing yet, but GP4 used GPS data to model the tracks. They are downright accurate, all of them. Perfection. For tracks it gets 20 out of 20. Although the lack of online multiplayer hurts, there's still loads of value in Grand Prix 4 today. It's a single player game and that's what it does perfectly. 
There are more community add-ons you could ever go through. Uh, different seasons, cars, tracks, new ones being made constantly. All you could ever want. The game is very temperamental though, and depending on your system, you might have some frustration ahead. For aging, it gets 15 out of 20. Total points, 90 out of 100 for GP4. So, the winner of this ultra-scientific comparison is Papyrus Grand Prix Legends. And if we take a look at the results, IndyCar Racing and Indianapolis 500 finished at the bottom. These games went for maximum realism, but the fidelity in other areas was not quite there yet, making the games unrealistically difficult to play, thus frustrating. Grand Prix 3 fell in the middle and suffers from poor aging, even though at the time it was a pretty damn good sim. Formula 1 Grand Prix and especially Revs had great balance between playability and realism. The top 5 fit inside 5 points. Any of them could win. Just goes to tell how great and influential all these games were. If I'd have to pick a personal favorite, it would be Grand Prix 2. There's just something in that game that will never be repeated. So what did you think of the list? What's your favorite? Comments below, please. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next race. Bye bye.